All right, so we're going to do some applied problems uh, to finish up this chapter. Um, so, you know, in all the, the applied problems for oblique triangles, uh, as you can imagine, that we're going to be able to model it with some triangle, or maybe more, more than one triangle. Sometimes they provide a figure for you, sometimes we have to draw our own. Um, in example 4.8, that's uh, one where we have to draw our own. They describe a scenario where we have a lighthouse that's 50 meters high, is on the edge of a vertical cliff overlooking the ocean. And they tell us the angle of elevation from a ship to the bottom of the lighthouse measures 15 degrees, and that uh, the angle of elevation from the ship to the top of the lighthouse measures uh, 24 degrees. We want to find how far the ship is from the cliff and the height of the cliff. So I'm just going to start kind of sketching this out, right? So we've got a big cliff. That's one thing we know for sure. There's our cliff. Here's the ocean. Here's our boat. There's my drawing of a boat. Now, um, we have a lighthouse that's 50 meters tall. I'm just going to draw it like that. So we know that that's 50 meters. Um, and they tell us that the angle of elevation from the boat to the bottom of the lighthouse, yeah, like top of the cliff, bottom of the lighthouse, that that's 15 degrees. And that if they measure the angle of elevation from the boat to the top of the lighthouse, that is 24 degrees. Okay, and we want to find, that's all the information, those are all the measures that we have. And we want to find two things. We want to find the distance from the ship to the cliff, and so that would be this distance here. And we want the height of the cliff, so that's that distance here. So this cliff is vertical, it says it's a vertical cliff. So I think we could take that to mean that this is a right angle. So we do have, it looks like, a right triangle, a couple of right triangles, right? Um, depending on if we go just to the top of the cliff or if we go all the way to the top of the um, lighthouse. But neither of the right triangles has enough information for us um, to solve. So um, we need to pick another triangle here to figure out some information. And I feel like we're not going to be able to get h or x first. Like, I think we're going to have to find some intermediate value. So, first of all, we'll just note that there's a third triangle. We see these two right triangles, but there's a third triangle, and it's this little sliver that has this as a side length, right? And, and, and then the boat is one um, vertex, and then there's a vertex, and there's a vertex, right? So those are our three points that make that little kind of sliver of a triangle sitting on top and we know that that is, let's see, that angle, 24 minus 15, that has to be 9 degrees. So we have a triangle here where we know uh, one side, we know that angle is 9 degrees. Um, still, though, it seems like we're missing information, so let's just kind of focus on putting this together. Um, I'm going to look at the right triangle with H as a side right here, okay? So it has this angle as 15, de uh, 15 degrees, um, which means that this angle here is 75 degrees because that has to be complementary to that angle. And that means I know this angle because that's got to be supplementary, right? That's a straight line, so this has to be... Um, 180 minus 75 degrees is 105. So that's 105 degrees. And this angle here, well, I know uh, the other two angles of that triangle are 9 degrees and 105 degrees. So that's 180 minus 105 minus 
And that's 66 degrees. Okay, so now that little sliver of a triangle sitting on top, I know all three angles, and I know this one side here. So I know a side and the angle opposite that side, which means I think we can use law of sines on this triangle. I'm going to use law of sines, and I'm going to find this side here. I'll call that side Z. So we'll start by using the law of sines. to find side Z. And note that side Z is opposite angle 66 degrees. So setting up this law of sines, we have 50, that side over sine of 9 degrees is equal to uh, Z over sine of 66 degrees. To solve for side Z, we're going to multiply by sine of 66 degrees on both sides. And then that tells us that z is equal to 50 times sine of 66 degrees divided by sine of 9 degrees Closing out the sine function before I divide by sine of 9 degrees, closing out the sine function, we get 291.99 meters. Okay, so I know this side. Now we're in a position where we can um, just solve this right triangle right here. So now we've, we've used what we know about oblique triangles. We don't have to use something more complicated than we need though, right? So we have enough information. We've got a right triangle that we can solve. So let's say I want to solve for x. Um, I can use the fact that I know that this angle is 15 degrees. x is the adjacent side, and I know the hypotenuse. z is the hypotenuse. So using SOHCAHTOA and, and the cosine part of SOHCAHTOA tells me that cosine of 15 degrees is equal to x over 291.99 And so x is 291.99 times cosine of 15 degrees. We have 282.04. meters. You might just round that to 282 meters. I mean, they, the measure they gave us uh, was just 50 meters, uh, not 50.0. And in fact, you could make the argument that there's only one significant digit there. But um, I tend to go out a couple spaces usually when I give my results. Now, if I want to find the height, again, I can use the angle 15 degrees. Now, height is the opposite side. So I'm going to use the sine part of SOHCAHTOA. Sine of 15 degrees is h over 291.99. So that means that h is equal to 291.99 times sine of 15 degrees. I get 75.6 meters. 
Maybe I'll go out two spaces just to be consistent with what I did before, 75.57 meters. All right, so we have uh, solved this problem. You know, ultimately, you know, at the end, to get the values that we wanted, that we were asking for, we solved the right triangle. But to get enough information about that right triangle, we had to first uh, use the law of sines on this oblique triangle kind of sitting on top. Okay, let's try another example. Um, this uh, is a vector example, right? I got two ropes supporting a crate, this crate that has a mass of 35.5 kilograms. And then they, get, they tell us the tensions in the rope. They tell us at least the magnitude of those tensions. And we want to know what is the angle between the ropes. These ropes, you know, this sign, or this crate rather, is just hanging there. It's not moving. This system is in equilibrium. So what I need to do first is draw what we call the free body diagram, right? Draw what it looks like with vectors in the plane. So I have this crate that's 35.5 kilograms. I've got this tension here at 17 kilograms. I'll call this I'll call this first tension. I'll call that T1. I'll call this one T2. And what I know is that this is 35.5 kilograms. This is 17.0 kilograms. This is 23.0 kilograms. They're asking us, what is the angle between the ropes? So, you know, we want to know what is this angle. Um, but we're not quite done with the figure yet. Because uh, first of all, you might have noticed um, this. we're in this, this section on solving oblique triangles, and we don't have a triangle yet. But we do know that those two tensions acting together have to perfectly equal out the 35.5 kilograms. So if I imagine adding these vectors together tip to tail, it has to end right on the x-axis. And it has to end right on the x-axis at a um, equal to that 35.5 kilograms straight downward, so it has to be at 35.5 kilograms up. So now here we have a triangle. We have a triangle that is 17 kilograms and then 23 kilograms and then 35.5 kilograms. I know all three sides. What we need to figure out now is what is the angle that we want? Because the angle that we're asking to find is not any of the actual angles that are in this triangle. Um, so if I imagine kind of extending out this T1 vector, like so, the angle we want to find is this one. And the way that we'll find that angle is to first find this angle. So I'm going to call this angle A, so that this is side A. And since I know all three sides of this triangle here, I can use the law of cosines to find the measure of angle A. And once we have A, we will just subtract it from 180, because that's a straight line, right, as we extend the T1 vector. Okay, so let's begin. Um, I'll, you know, before we put this in the, the, you know, start with the law of cosines, I'll just say, setting this up, you know, this was a lot of work, right? We had to be really thoughtful about it. We had to figure out where is the triangle. We had to realize that the triangle that we wanted to solve was not really, was not this triangle. 
right? We had to, you know, this is a vector problem. So we needed to put together the free body diagram. Um, so we want to solve for angle A. So I'm going to use the law of cosines that begins A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC times cosine A. And I want to solve for angle A, so I'm going to isolate cosine of A. Um, again, like we did before, I'm going to like take this, throw it over there, take this, throw it over here, and we find that uh, 2BC times cosine of A is equal to B squared plus C squared minus A squared, and then divide both sides by 2BC. So cosine of A is B squared plus C squared minus A squared all over 2BC. This means that A is equal to arc cosine of that fraction. So now I'm going to go ahead and put in um, those values. So I know that side A is 35.5, and I'll just, uh, you know, the sides B and C don't matter. I'll just call, um, I'll call side B the 17 kilogram, the T1 side, and side C uh, will be the 23 kilograms. So we have 17 squared plus 23 squared minus 35.5 squared all over 2 times 17 times 23. Okay, remember, when we're using the arc cosine function with the law of cosines, right, we have to make sure that the top goes in its own set of parentheses, that the bottom goes in its own set of parentheses, open parentheses for the top, 17 squared plus 23 squared minus 30, oops, 35.5 squared. Close those parentheses, divide by parentheses for the bottom, 2 times 17 times 23. Close those parentheses for the bottom, close paren for the arc cosine function, and we get 124.4 degrees. Okay, so this angle, I'm going to scroll back up here for a moment. That's this angle that we just found. So to get the angle we want here, I'm going to just subtract from 180, right, because they make a straight line together. One eighty minus one twenty four point four that's fifty five point six degrees. Great, so that's the angle, uh, that's the angle right here that we're looking for in the free body diagram, which corresponds to this angle right here, 55.6 degrees.